So now we are ready to do translation. Translation converts RNA into protein. The RNA that we have here, we are assuming is the mRNA. mRNA has triplets that we call codons. So the first three bases are the first codon, the next three the second codon, and so on. The ribosome has our RNA. We're just going to imagine the ribosome. So the ribosome will be here. Ribosomes can accommodate two codons at a time and they can allow the tRNAs to come in as well. So mRNA has triplets called codons. This will be our representation of a tRNA. The triplet of bases at one end of a tRNA are called the anticodon, and at the other end of a tRNA, there is a spot where an amino acid can be attached. I like to think of tRNAs like a pickup truck. You can have a pickup truck that's empty, or you can have a pickup truck that is full. And just like with a pickup truck, when you deliver the load, you don't throw the truck away. You just go refill it. So, imagining the ribosome is here, the first tRNA will come in. The tRNA that comes in is the one that has its anticodon complementary to the codon. But remember, the ribosome has room for two at a time. So in comes the second one. Now when the second one comes in, a bond between the first amino acid and the second amino acid will form. The H and the OH, it's at the, at the ends of the amino acid, will form water. That's dehydration synthesis that you perhaps remember from earlier in the semester. And then when this bond forms, the bond holding the tRNA to the first amino acid will break. So this tRNA will go floating off and be recycled. It'll go get another load, in this case another red amino acid. At this point, the ribosome will move down and that allows the next tRNA to come in. Again, the tRNA that comes in will have an anticodon complementary to the codon. And again, the H and the OH will come off. The bond between the second amino acid and the third will form, and the tRNA bond with the second amino acid will break. So now this tRNA can go floating off. So at this point, we now have amino acid 1 attached to amino acid 2, attached to amino acid 3, attached to the transfer RNA. For the purposes of our simulation, we only have three codons shown. Most genes have many. At some point, however, the next codon over here will be a stop codon. And when a stop codon is encountered, there is no tRNA that comes in. Instead, there's a release factor, which causes this last tRNA to break its bond with the last amino acid. So now this can go floating off. And this is a chain of amino acids, otherwise known as a polypeptide or a protein. So what determines the order of the amino acids in the protein is the order of the codons. You should look in your lab book or your textbook for a chart of the codons. Notice that it's a chart of the codons, which is found in mRNAs, and not anticodons. So what determined the order of the codons? Well, if you recall, it was the DNA's template strand which dictated the sequence of bases on the mRNA.